And welcome back to the Mark Hoke Show. And we are very excited to have our next guest. I personally cannot begin to tell you how thrilled I am to have this guy on. Been seeing him in and out of the ring for a very long time. Of course, we're going to be seeing him at AEW Collision in the broadcast booth this Saturday night, February 10th in Henderson at the Dollar Loan Center. The show's going to be starting at 4 o'clock right here in town. And, of course, you'll be able to see him if you're not here on TNT at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And also, he's going to be pulling double duty because we've got the Nigel McGinnis Magical Night on Friday, February 9th at 9 p.m. at the Nerd in downtown Las Vegas. You can get tickets for that at Eventbrite. It's the former Ring of Honor world champion and pure champion among many accolades he's had in professional wrestling. Hey, he's a legend in the sport. What can we say? We welcome Nigel McGinnis to the show. Nigel, how are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you very much, Mark. That was a wonderful introduction. You must have done that sort of thing before. Ah, Just a few times. What can I say? (laughs) (laughs) Nigel, I got to tell you, this has been a very interesting time uh, for you guys at AEW. But this collision show... I think it's going to be a very fascinating evening, to say the least. With the big game coming up here on Sunday and Tony Khan's connections to the NFL, this is going to be a pretty special evening, to say the least. I can't imagine what it's going to be like being at Collision and the surprises that should be coming up here on Saturday night. Yeah, I guarantee. I mean, every time I show up to work on Saturday for Collision, there's something that surprises me on the show, you know. And so that should tell you something. Uh, It's always worth tuning in. And if they're in the neighborhood, obviously coming in to check out the show as well. But I just think I'm so, so, I was just doing another interview earlier saying how proud I am to be part of the brand as well. From the guys in the ring to to us announcers who get the, you know, the, the, the best seats in the house to all the guys behind the scenes that put it on. It's always a pleasure. It's always enjoyable. And I'm always very, very, proud of the product that we put out we've had some incredible matches you know from that 58 minute match um with bullet club gold against ftr early on and then other matches that have come down the road we've got brian danielson's odyssey that is continuing the clam digger continues to have all the matches that he wants and then obviously dad of the year father of the year father of the millennium christian cage and his conflicts with uh, adam copeland that's been expanding but you've got so many young guys on the crew as well who are coming in trying to earn spots and move further up the card and guys who are veterans of the job as well who are there. So it's uh, it's going to be an incredible night, certainly, Saturday night. And to your point, Friday night as well. A little bit more nervous about that, but uh, it will be a, a real honor to me to, to get to do my show again. Well, I know a lot of people were very interested to see what Collision was going to be like when it first started because you, know, mm. you already had two different AEW shows with Rampage and Dynamite, and now we're adding a third one in and said, well, what are they going to do differently on this? But the show definitely has a a much different feel to it. And with you and Kevin Kelly and then Tony Schiavone doing what you're doing on there, it's a very different show than the other ones. And what are you guys trying to do to make it feel much different from the other two shows that AEW is putting out? Well, I mean, obviously every every announcer has their own sort of voice and their own sort of style. Um, I think uh, with my, how would I say this, opinion, Brian and various other people in the company, I like to sort of push that opinion far more vehemently than, than I would have done in the last place I worked. What other people like to do as well. And, you know, it's just horses, of course, is whichever floats your boat more. And I just feel like that, that really makes uh, what I say stand out and be a little bit different as well. But, you know, some people hate that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> certainly our voices are different. Uh, Kevin has the experience in Japan and Ring of Honor. He knows all about statistics. He knows everything about the history. And Tony Schiavone is, is, is the OG when it comes to professional wrestling. He's seen absolutely everything there is over the last 30 or, God laws, I'm, I'm aging him, saying 40 years. But Tony is someone that I respect tremendously, despite what I might say about him on air. <laughs> uh, so it's a pleasure to work with those guys. And as I said, yeah, it is a different feel. And I'm not sure exactly why, because ostensibly it's the same idea. It's, you know, wrestlers in the ring with incredible matches and promos and storylines outside of it. But uh, it does, yes, it does feel different i was going to save this for later but you've already brought it up twice Hmm. what is up with this thing with brian danielson this has been done for years are you just going to finally get in the ring and clock him at some point or what 
Not a chance. He's he's afraid of me. No chance he'd ever get in the ring with me. He knows he's got nothing to gain from that. He's got he's got his long list of cherry picked opponents that he wants for his Odyssey, so he can go back to his little you know humble abode in Seattle and uh, dig his clams out of the uh, beach every weekend. Um, you know, so I don't think he has any interest in that. And that's all well and good. Um, it's probably better for him either way. You know, I, I enjoy making fun of him and belittling him. Obviously, the truth is he's an incredible wrestler, uh, one of the best that I ever faced. But that can't take away from the uh, the vitriol and the legitimate jealousy and, and sort of resentment that I have towards someone. Their career was at the same sort of level as me, and then our stars certainly went in different directions. Yeah. Fair enough. But I think a lot of people would enjoy that for some day for you to step back in those ropes one more time and make that match happen. Over the rainbow. Yeah. Who who knows? You know, you can certainly say never, never, never say never in this job. But uh, yeah, I I, I wouldn't bet against it. I I would bet against it at this juncture. I know. But everybody keeps asking you. I had to do it, too. Sorry. Nostalgia. No worries. Yeah. AEW has become a very different place now that MJF is no longer the world champion and Samoa Joe is on top. It's a Mm. real different tenor in here now with Joe leading the way, Adam Cole and the Undisputed Kingdom uh, doing their thing. And now you've got Tony Storm having to deal with Deanna Perrazzo and Serena Deeb, a very different set of challengers. Swerve Strickland and Adam Page coming after those guys. This has been a very different vibe lately. What do you think about this right now? Yeah, it's interesting. It's intriguing. It's everything that pro wrestling should be, you know what I mean? It, it, it gets you to uh, ask questions, gets you to pay attention, gets you to look forward to future matchups, you know? Some old Joe is a guy who I don't think is any any question, but Ring of Honor on the map. He took what was uh, an exciting upstart promotion and made them into a worldwide recognized brand by carrying the Ring of Honor world title as long as he did and as well as he did and having those sort of matches. It just established that this is different. You know, this is something you're not going to see anywhere else. And I don't think there can be any other argument that that Ring of Honor style, pioneered by guys like Joe and Brian and everybody else that came after them, has now become the de facto pro wrestling style. No matter what you watch back in the early 2000s, nowhere else was really doing that. A little bit, you can say, yeah. And obviously it drew its inspirations from promotions like ECW and All Japan, of course, and a lot of the British stuff. But be that as it may, there's, there's no argument argument that can be made that the effect that Ring of Honor has had and and Samoa Joe, I think, is is pivotal to that. Yeah, it's been pretty fascinating. And I I had just asked Claudio Castagnoli a little while ago about the influence of Ring of Honor and those days and looking around the landscape of professional wrestling, how much that time frame has affected the current landscape of pro wrestling. And it's pretty incredible when you take a look at it. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought about it. I remember when I, I first started, you know, going to uh, working with WWE uh, and certainly now in AEW, a lot of the times you'd see people that you cut your teeth with on the indies being on these massive shows. Certainly when I think of Wembley Stadium and all in last year, you know, half of that card, I, I'd have done shows on in the early 2000s. And to see how so many of those guys got to that level was something you would never imagine. I mean, you put yourself back in the landscape of pro wrestling in the early 2000s, and you would have never have said that half of these guys that were on top that drew this money would ever get to that stage because, I mean, we heard the edict. We heard the edict. From at the time, the only other big company in the job, WWE, was that if you weren't 250 and you weren't a former football player, then you weren't going to have a chance. You might come in, you might have a sort of a low card role or a mid card role but that changed so dramatically because of guys like Brian and Punk and, and Joe to a, to a large extent as well in TNA that uh, it just changed the landscape and, and no one's ever said it obviously but I think they had to switch their game plan because they, they realized that this is what people wanted to see. And, of course, we're on with Nigel McGuinness from AEW and getting ready for AEW Collision coming up here on Saturday night in Henderson at the Dollar Loan Center. If you haven't got your tickets, well, you're an idiot. Do it now, or Nigel will hunt you down, I promise. Will you, Nigel? Uh, I'll do my best. I'm a very busy man, Mark, so I try to keep my hunting people down to a minimum. Fair enough. i probably put you on the spot. We've got AEW Revolution coming up here in just a few weeks as we get ready for 
the retirement match of Sting. And this is shaping up to be a very entertaining night as well. How keyed up are you for this pay-per-view? Oh, super excited, super excited. I mean, tickets have been flying off the shelf already. You know, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but uh, it's going to be close to a sellout, I would imagine. And I don't think there's any question that it's in large part, if not whole part, because of Sting's retirement and speaks to the respect everybody as fans uh, and certainly the guys in the back have for Sting as well. I mean, he's a guy who, first ballot Hall of Famer, no question about it, but he's also a guy who was professional, never had an ego, and uh, certainly a lot of other people in his position could have done, came in and is always, He's willing to do whatever is asked of him, always over, able to change his gimmick over the years as well and, and remain relevant, not just do the same old tired out tricks, but something different, take some risks and always entertain. I think that's why Sting will always be loved. And so to that point, this will be the last night that he gets in the ring. And uh, because of that, there will be some incredible memories, not just for him, but everybody that either watches the show or is there in person. Does it still amaze you watching him, you know, being so close to that? And he's 64 years old and doing what he's doing. It, it just has to blow you guys away. Yeah, yeah, certainly. As I said to my point, you know, a lot of guys like that could come out and just do the same old tricks, you know, and not take any risks. And but he will consistently do that. He, you know, I'm sure he gets paid very well, but he certainly, I think, is worth money because he had something for every time that he's on the show. He's got the legacy, he's got the history. People know who he is. And when he's in there, you think of the effect that he's had with Darby Allen as well. And Darby Allen's such a talented guy in and of himself, but that rub that he gets from sting has, has helped everyone involved yeah and what a great spot for darby when i was yeah, uh, right i mean when i was up in seattle and you know he's standing up there and he's in the ring with me adam copeland and sting mm-hmm. what an amazing opportunity for a guy like that that must have just been incredible for him to be in the ring standing there with those two icons yeah, yeah, no question about it as, as a real fan of the business. And I think that's for all of us. And I think that's arguably why we all love AEW. And it all comes from the top. It comes from Tony Khan, who by his own admission is a, a pro wrestling fan. And because of that, he has that pro wrestling fan mentality, which is open to all sort of things and to the respect of the guys who've been in the job for a long time. There's a reason why guys like Adam Copeland and Christian Cage and Sting come to AEW. And no, it's not just about the money. It's about that creative freedom. It's about that respect. And it's about the ability to go out there and still do it. You do not watch a Christian Cage match or an Adam Copeland match or a Sting match now and go, oh, you know, they're not as good as they used to be. They still are absolutely incredible, you know. As much as I may bemoan him on TV, Adam Copeland is just incredible. Bell to bell, and in the back, the influence that he's had on the guys as well. You know, I just wish he'd stop threatening to, to hurt me. Well, well, have you ever considered being nice to these guys on commentary once? It's my job. What are you talking about? I've got to call what I see. And if he's, you know, he comes out and, and, and says that he wants to team with Christian Cage. And then two weeks later, because Sting has a word in his ear, he changes his mind completely and wants to fight him. And then tries to end his career as well. I can't let that go. Understood. I tell you, Nigel, it's fun because I just as a personal compliment, I just think that when you're doing that broadcasting, it just brings such a great laugh and a change of pace. And it's just something out of the blue that you'll say that just breaks everything up. And it just reminds us one of the best parts about pro wrestling, that we're supposed to be having fun when we do it. Amen. A hundred percent. You know, William Regal's right when he says that none of us are owed anything in wrestling. Every dollar we make, every minute we spend in the business is a blessing. And I certainly feel that way. And yeah, you know, sometimes I do think we, we, we do all take it far too seriously and worry too much about this and that. You know, it's just a blessing whether you're, you're a fan in the stands or somebody working inside the industry as well. Have fun with it. You know, have fun with it. There are so many other jobs that we could be doing that we wouldn't like, you know. I mean, we're so blessed not to have to work 40 hours a week doing a job that we can't stand. And so, yeah, it's it's an incredible, incredible blessing that we, we all have. Now, one of the things that I was really excited to get to talk to you about and, and give you a chance to promote is the Nigel McGuinness Magical Night that's going to be happening here at The Nerd on Friday night. And I've heard so much about these shows that you do from so many people. And it's not just Mm. you doing magic tricks and things like that. But this is kind of a a one-man show and an ode to professional wrestling and your friends and, you know, kind of reaching into people's hearts a little bit. And I've just heard so many things about how you're really trying to reach inside and, and touch people through 
the magic in professional wrestling. So tell everybody a little bit about this show and what you're trying to accomplish as you're doing it. I mean, originally the show was inspired by the passing of Jay Briscoe. Unfortunately, in January last year, Jay, a man who put one of the most alive pro wrestlers of all time, you know, his life was cut short, I believe, at 38 years of age. And that was the real inspiration. I had the idea to do a magic show before, and many people have suggested I did. But I just didn't really have the impetus, you know. And then with his passing, it was just like, no, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. As cliched as that is. And so I took three weeks, you know. I wasn't working anywhere at the time. So I was able to do that and commit three weeks to working on a show that was partially inspired by Derek Delgado's in and of itself as well. Um, if you haven't seen that early way to check it out, I believe it's on Hulu, you can see it. And he tells a lot of his life stories and uses magic to accentuate that. So I thought I'd try to do the same sort of thing to your point as an homage to pro wrestling. Talk about the similarities that magic and pro wrestling have and then talk about a lot of the experiences that I had as well in pro wrestling. A lot of heartbreak, a lot of the triumph and tie that all back together with magic. And some of it is visual magic, some of it's mentalism, some of it is just you know, funny things that will make you giggle as well. But then I, I get people up on stage and we all have a good laugh. And we all sort of revel in this, uh, I like to call it a, a proud, dirty secret. <laughs> pro wrestling, you know, if, if you're a, if you're a pro wrestling fan, you know, and you you see someone walking by out in the real world with a pro wrestling T-shirt, you just you feel like, yeah, we're part of a club. You know what I mean? And so it's that it's that feeling. Something arguably I'm as proud of this show as I have anything else I've done. I did the documentary 2012 when I retired, and obviously over the body of work as a wrestler and now as a commentator as well. So uh, between all of those, I just think this this is a, a way to blend it all together and pay homage to it and, and leave fans and friends and whoever comes to see this show with a with a night of heightened human experience that they, they won't they'll neither forget or regret. Yeah, it should be a great time so everybody you can get tickets for Eventbrite on that. Get on down to the Nerd on Friday night. There's going to be a lot of AEW guys that are going to come down as well, I think, because they're going to be in town for the show the next night, as we talked about. So I think they may come down, and we'll probably see a lot of uh, uh, one-time experiences that you'll never get to see again. Are you going to make Brian Danielson disappear? No, I don't need to. He won't show up. He's too busy digging clams and eating vegan food. <laughs> Fair enough. His yeah. hotel room on his own. <laughs> Of course, looking down the road, you know, we're going to be headed back to Wembley uh, this year, too. Man, I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard to top last year, but I'm sure you guys are going to be bracing yourselves to go for that. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't doubt it for a second. That's the one thing that Tony Khan has proved, you know, on the day he pulls it off, right, you know, big show. And uh, Wembley was an incredible night. For me personally, it was 31 years, almost to the day that I first sat in Wembley Stadium uh, watching SummerSlam. And I first just had an epiphany that I was going to be a professional wrestler. So to come back to that venue and stand in the ring and announce the world's record Aid pro wrestling attendance. It, 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 you just you couldn't write it. You know what I mean. You, 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 that's something from a movie. So to to live that experience, yeah, was was absolutely incredible. And to your point, to one up it. I don't know. I, I made a joke, didn't I, when uh, that was first announced that if they sell out that uh, I'd have to dust the boots off. And I think I probably would have been up for it, you know, but uh, it just didn't didn't work out because Brian was scared and you know. He, pretended that he'd hurt his arm and then all of a sudden was fine the next week. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote me on any of that at all. Oh, I think it's a little <laughs> too late for that, sir, but it's all good. Nigel, we're going to look forward to seeing you at AEW Collision on Saturday night at the Dollar Loan Center. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the Mark Oak Show. To me, this was a great privilege to get to talk to you finally. And we can't wait to see you down in Henderson on Saturday night and on Friday night at the Nerd. It's going to be a great time. Fantastic. Well, I hope to see you at both of those places as well, Mark. Well, can't wait. And thanks for coming on the Mark Oak Show. We do appreciate it. You got it. No worries, mate.